Hello, everyone. I don't know why I started like that. Let's start over again. Hello. I can't start it right. Hi. Um, so I have an issue where I buy way too many books as evidenced by my overflowing. You can see I'm starting to double stack books. My bookshelves are overflowing. I can't stop buying books. It's a really big issue that I have. Doesn't sound like a big issue. It sounds like a stupid issue to have. I'm very privileged. I, have, I don't have many big issues in my life. Okay. So I'm trying to tell myself I'm not going to buy any more books until my birthday, which is in July. So that's not like that big of a goal, <laughs> considering how quick that is approaching. But for right now, all I can do is fantasize about the books that I want to read. So I thought it'd be fun to do a little video talking about the books that I won't let myself buy, at least right now. <laughs> and that I hopefully will be buying in the future. But at least for right now, I'm not letting myself buy these books. There's a ton of different books represented here, a ton of different genres, so let's just get into it. First book on the list is Lady Macbeth by Ava Reed. This is a gothic retelling of Lady Macbeth. I think we all know the story. What's drawing me to this book is, first of all, loving gothic tales, loving a good retelling. And the book cover is so good. I've never read anything by Ava Reed before. I know a lot of her books are very popular. They've just never, like, spoken to me before. So I thought this would be a good one to start with. And I'm just really sucked about it. I think it sounds really cool. Next we have Annie Bot by Sierra Greer. This is a sci-fi book that follows like a sex bot who's created to be the perfect girlfriend for her human owner. But then her human owner kind of likes when she shows more like real person attitudes. And as she starts to have become more of a real person, a lot of issues come up. Like what does it mean to be human? Power, autonomy, control. So this book explores all of those different things. I'm in my sci-fi era. So I'm really interested in sci-fi books right now. I've actually never read anything about like AI, which is surprising because I feel like it's very prevalent, especially right now. And I haven't heard a lot about this book, but the premise just really gets me. I think it would be really good. Next, we have Sunbirth by Chloe Michelle Howard. This book takes place in an Irish village in the 90s, I think. And it follows her main character, Susanna. <laughs> who is gay, but she hides it from her conservative community out of fear of rejection. I've heard a lot of good things about this book, actually. I think the cover also really draws me on because it's just beautiful. A lot of these going to be, like, cover motivated. I can't help it. So, yeah, I've heard this book is beautiful. That's the main reason I'm interested in it. But I've also heard it has a lot of, like, Catholic imagery, <laughs> which I love. So I think it's just going to be really, like, lush fun read. The next book that I'm not gonna let myself buy is Chain Gang All Stars by Nana Kwame Ajay Brenya. This book follows women gladiators fighting for their freedom within a prison system, which is just crazy. Like, that sounds so good. <laughs> I'm interested in this, obviously, because it critiques the American prison system, it critiques American capitalism, it critiques systemic racism, just everything that I'm interested in reading about, it critiques. Well, I'm interested in reading critiques about those things, not those things by themselves. <laughs> Let me make that very clear. But this book just seems to explore like, really interesting themes. I've heard a lot of good things about this one as well. And I think it was even in the Goodreads Choice Awards. It wasn't like the finalist, but it was a cont contender, which is saying something. It means it's very popular. The next book is Thirst. And the author has a last name that I'm going to struggle to say. I'm so sorry. Um, her name is Marina Yuskza. I can't pronounce any last names. Um... And honestly, as someone with a very unpronounceable last name, like I get it when people can't say my last name, so I hope I'm not offending anyone. But this book sounds so cool. This book is like at the top of my list. I really want to read this book. It takes place in Argentina and it follows two women who fall in love, but the twist is that one of them is a vampire. I don't know what it is. I don't know why the vampire is having a comeback, but I'm loving it. I think it's so fun. And I'm interested in this just because like it's a sapphic vampiric romance like how can you not be interested in that it sounds so good and cover not bad just, just sensing a theme here next we have piglet by lottie hazel and this book follows our main character who is about to marry a man from a much higher social class when like shortly before the wedding he reveals this like big betrayal summary on goodreads reveals nothing about what the betrayal is so i guess it's like a main plot point that they don't want to spoil this book I've seen everywhere because of the covers. Like, both the US and the UK covers have these, like, beautiful depictions of food. <laughs> and that I think is so fun. So I know this book explores, like, the relationship with food a lot. Like, I think she takes a lot of comfort in food. or She's very invested in food. Something like that. And, like, I think that's something interesting to explore. Because women and their relationship to food is just 
fraught with a lot of drama because of the patriarchy and because of the way that we're made to feel like our body should look like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You don't need me to tell you this. If you're watching this, you're probably in society and familiar with that. <laughs> I've also heard there's very lush descriptions of food, which I'm also interested in. I just think this book will be fun. Like, I'm interested in it. I want to explore the relationship with food. Next, we have another, like, retelling, and that is Fruit of the Dead by Rachel Lyon. This book is a contemporary retelling of the myth of Persephone and Demeter. Um, not just Persephone. Demeter was there as well. She's a big part of this. <laughs> and, like, it takes place on a lush private island, and it's about addiction and sex, family independence, and who holds the power in a modern underworld. I don't know. It sounds really interesting. I love the myth of Persephone. I would love to read more retellings of the myth of Persephone. I just love Greek retellings in general, and I love this, like, a contemporary spinoff. It's not just, like, I feel like ever since Song of Achilles, there's been a ton of books that just retell greek stories greek mythology so i like that we're now entering an era where there's like modern twists on it like i think that's fun after that we have the center by yisha manazar Siddiqui. this is a story about a pakistani translator in young in london who attends this like mysterious school that can teach you a language in a very short period of time but you're not allowed to tell anyone about it and you have to like devote yourself completely to the school during your time there. And there's some secret like sinister cost behind all of this. This is a book that I've heard a lot of people talking about and most of them seem to like it. I don't know, I'm in my horror era as well as my sci-fi era. So I'm interested in this because of that. And it's also supposed to be like mystery thriller, which I'm trying to get more into. And just overall, I think the premise sounds really captivating. So I totally want to read this one. Next is The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. This book f takes place in a world where one day everyone wakes up and on their doorstep is a piece of string. And the length of that piece of string determines how long you have to live, which is wild. <laughs> but I think it's like the classic, if you knew how long you had to live, would you want to know? But also like if that knowledge was forced upon you without you getting the choice, like how would you react? How would the world react if we knew how long our p politicians had to live? Or if we knew how long certain hospital patients had to live and we had to choose certain people? I know that it goes into a lot of the political ramifications of that, which I'm really interested in. I just think it's a fun, unique premise, and I want to see how it plays out. Then we have, this is a book I know nothing about, honestly, Malice by John Gwynn. I've seen this book recommended by a lot of people on YouTube. I can't think of their names right now. Like, I can see their face so clearly in my head, but I cannot think of their names. So... A lot of YouTubers have re been reading the series. It's a classic, like, high fantasy series, and I love some classic high fantasy. It's been a while, honestly. Like, I read The Poppy Wars recently, but other than that, like, I haven't delved into, like, a really good fantasy series in a long time, so I'm just dying to, honestly, especially after reading The Poppy Wars. It makes me want to read more fantasy, so this is definitely at the top of my list, and the whole series is out, so it would be perfect to binge, honestly, and they're huge, hefty books, which I love. I think I'm going to really like it. After that, we have Sociopath, a memoir by Patrick Patrice. No, I think it's Patrice. Patrice Gag... Gag... I'm going to say Gagney. Patrice Gagney. I'm so sorry. I'm so bad at last names. I should not be a YouTuber. A booktuber, at least. So this is pretty self-explanatory, I think. It's a memoir about the author's, like, struggled, struggle to come to terms with her sociopath diagnosis. Um, I think like the word sociopath gets thrown around a lot by people who don't really understand it. I'm really interested to see the perspective of someone who is actually diagnosed with it and to see what they have to say about it and just like what their life is actually like. Because obviously it's a very demonized term and I don't know if it like deserves to be. Maybe it does, but maybe it doesn't. So I think it would be interesting just to hear from the perspective of someone who actually has it. After that, we have Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. I'm interested in this book mainly because I recently read Animal by Lisa Tadeo for my reading Phoebe Ritter's favorite books recommendations video part two. So if you want to see that, check that out. But this book follows the sex lives of three real American women based on nearly a decade of reporting. That's all I know. That's all I want to know. I want to go into this one pretty blind. Is this? It is nonfiction. So I'm interested in her take on that. I really liked her writing in the animal. I'm interested to see how that like 
is different in a nonfiction book and her take on a nonfiction book. And I just think the subject matter is really interesting. So I want to read more Elisa Tadeo, and I think this is my next one. After that, we have Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. I'm just going to read you the little Goodreads description of this one because I don't really know how to summarize it. Natsuki isn't like the other girls. She has a wand and a transformation mirror. She might be a witch or an alien from another planet. Together with her cousin Yu, Natsuki spends her summers in the wild mountains in Nagano, dreaming of other worlds. When a terrible sequence of events threatens to part the two children forever, they make a promise. Survive no matter what. Now Natsuki is grown. She lives a quiet life with her asexual husband, surviving as best as she can by pretending to be normal. But the demands of Natsuki's family are increasing. Her family wonder why she's still not pregnant, and dark shadows from Natsuki's childhood are pursuing her. Fleeing the suburb for the mountains of her childhood, Natsuki prepares herself with a reunion for you. Will he still remember their promise, their promise and will he help her keep it? This is horror. It does not sound like a horror premise, but I know it's horror. I read Convenience Store Women by this author, and I wasn't in love with it. It was actually kind of a letdown for me. But I'm definitely interested in this premise and her take on a horror novel. I just think that sounds really interesting. And I love the little cover with a little hedgehog on it. So I'm partial to that, I guess. So I definitely, this is on the top of my to-be-read list. This is the last fiction book on my list, and that is Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. I know nothing about this book other than it's like a modern day retelling of David Copperfield, and it takes place in Appalachia, I think. And I'm really interested in the setting in Appalachia. I just like, I think it's because I got on the side of TikTok that talks about like monsters from Appalachia. Like, I don't know if you've seen this, but there are all these TikToks of people from Appalachia, and they'll be like, oh no, like there's something outside my window <laughs> and like I don't know that I believe in the monsters but it's creepy it's a creepy ass setting um and there's a lot of also like working class history in Appalachia so I think it's a really interesting place and I want to read more about it so I think this read the perfect little addition to that and then the last book I have on my list is a fic- is a non-fiction book and that is Kill Anything That Moves, The Real American War in Vietnam by Nick Terse. The title is just self-explanatory. It talks about the Vietnam War and particularly like America's part in it. I think this is particularly interesting in our current moment. Um, I don't know exactly when this video is going to go up. So it might be like a month from now or maybe like a month and a half from now because I tend to pre-film a lot. But right now in the news is all the student protests about Palestine, particularly like in Colombia and how all of these states are sending their fucking military forces to subdue the student protests, which are peaceful. And it just, like, is making me think a lot about the Vietnam War and the student protests that happened then. And it's making me also realize that I just don't know much about the Vietnam War. I read The Sympathizer earlier this year, and that also made me interested in the subject. And I've also been watching The Sympathizer, like, HBO adaption. And I just, like, I feel like I need to know more. I think that's, like, my issue with all nonfiction books, is I just want to read, like, every single nonfiction book there is, because I feel like I don't know enough about anything. So I don't know if anyone else has that problem. (laughs) maybe that's just a me thing but I also know that this analyzes the Vietnam War from a leftist perspective which is what I'm interested in I don't want to read I don't want to read liberal history (laughs) or like centrist or republican history I'm not interested in it I want to read from a leftist perspective it's what I want so I'm excited for this book as well and that's definitely at the top of my list so there you go those are the books that I'm not letting myself buy but the books that I want to buy very badly and the books that I hopefully will be buying at least some of them soon when I'm allowing myself to buy books again thank you for watching let me know the books that are at the top of your list to buy below or if you've read any of these books and if you think I should pick them up sooner rather than later I can totally be influenced very very easily by anyone saying that I should like buy a book now so If you want to influence me in that way, just leave a comment. (laughs) Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon in another video. Goodbye.